Will you explain coherent heart and coherent brain? Well, this isn't, this isn't foreign to any of us. When, let's talk about incoherence. When you're in that high beta state and uh, you can't predict or control anything in your life, or you have the perception that things are gonna get really bad and you switch on that system, what you wanna do now is control and predict everything in your life because you know you're getting ready for the worst thing that could possibly happen. So as you begin to think about every person, every object, every meeting, every place, it's all mapped in your brain and you're shifting your attention to all of these elements, the brain starts to fire out of order because of your attention shifting so quickly because every person, every object, everything has a neurological network in your brain. Keep that up in high beta. The brain starts to compartmentalize. It's a house divided against itself. And when the brain's incoherent, we're incoherent. Mm. When the brain isn't working right, we're not working right. And that, that default state actually is an unhealthy state for the brain to function in. So people become reliant on whatever it is that makes the the discord go away. They, they try to make the feeling go away by gaming or Smoking whatever, pot. whatever it is, whatever it is they need to do to, to, to settle down that high beta state. Okay. Well, you're on the zoom meeting, right? And you, you got the gas pedal on, you're judging that person on the zoom call. You want to reach across the screen and throttle them, but you're smiling and you're stepping on the brake. So you're your heart is racing because it's pumping blood. It's what it does when it's under sympathetic dominance. But you're not running and you're not fighting, you're not hiding. So the heart is actually beating against the closed system. You keep that up, the heart starts beating very incoherently. And when incoherent waves interfere, you lose energy. So you lose energy in the heart and you lose energy in the brain. And so then we just become automatic. That's the default, right? That's 95% of who we are. So. Our data shows over and over again that you can make your brain more coherent. What does that mean? When you're sensing nothing, when you're sensing space, the act of sensing causes you to stop thinking and analyzing. Mm -hmm. And if you're sensing and you're feeling, you're experiencing, you're noticing, and you're doing that, you're not analyzing and your brain waves naturally change from beta to alpha. But it feels the, so good. It, when you drop down to that level, if you stay at it, there comes this moment where those different compartments of the brain that were once firing out of order, out of rhythm, all of a start, all of a sudden starts beating in cadence and they start to synchronize. The front of the brain starts talking to the back of the brain. These networks over here start oscillating with these networks and all of a sudden you see recruiting of more communities of neurons firing in the same rhythm. And all of a sudden when the whole brain is firing the same rhythm, that's called coherence and that's a very strong signal to the brain that causes a very strong signal to the body that everything's moving back to regulation. Stress is autonomic dysregulation. This kind of cadence is ca causing autonomic regulation. The body's going, whoa, 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 something, information is traveling along the nervous system that's very coherent, very, very consistent, and it's carrying the right information. So then when the brain is coherent, then um, there's, a, there's a more energy because waves build on waves and so all we see we see this happen and all of a sudden we see a person move into theta and if they can just hang in there a little bit longer something really profound happens they move into these super aroused states of gamma now gamma is super consciousness it's actually faster than high beta only difference is it's very compressed and it's very organized. So the entire brain now functioning in gamma, the person's having a very profound arousal. Now the arousal is not fear. The arousal is not anger. The arousal is not pain. The arousal is ecstasy. The arousal is bliss. The arousal is something they could say it's connection or love. At the same time, we see the heart all of a sudden feeling this feeling start to move into this beautiful rhythm boom and all of a sudden the heart starts to cause the body to move out of survival and drop down into this relaxed state so we become relaxed in our heart and when that happens waves tend to build on waves let's see if i can explain this we see in the brain a very slow wave called delta that's deep sleep, but the person's oscillating in delta in coherence. And then the wave riding delta is theta, like in a harmonic. And two dolphins. Yeah, and then here comes alpha riding on theta, and then beta on there, and all of a sudden you see the person go into this gamma state, and the heart is telling the brain, it's safe to create now. 
It's safe to be in the present moment. There is the, the, the danger, the threat, the trauma's over. And the heart literally informs the brain that the event is over and it resets the baseline for anxiety, for trauma in the survival center of the amygdala of the brain. And all of a sudden, the person can relax into the unknown, the present moment. And no danger, nothing happens that they're so afraid and the unknown is always the, the scary place. That's how we survived and adapted for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Now the unknown is the perfect place to create and the person's relaxed in their heart and the heart's sending this beautiful rhythm. And when that happens, it's causing these waves of energy in the brain and the brain is receiving it from the heart. It's saying it can get creative. This is the creative center. So now the heart and the brain start working together and somehow there's a profound shift in everything from electromagnetism to biology to neurocircuitry to neurohormones and you see the person not wanting the moment to end yeah and when the heart beats in rhythm it, it produces a very profound magnetic field that's up to th three meters wide right so you got this you got this broad band base that's that's that tends to be magnetic and you have a coherent brain which tends to be electric so the the thought becomes the electrical charge the directive you send the signal out into whatever it is that you want into the field you got to feel a feeling before it happens in the quantum you get a coherent heart and you begin to draw the experience to you so when there's a vibrational match between your energy in some possibility that exists in the quantum field that you haven't experienced yet. The cool thing about it is now we don't have to go anywhere and do something to get it. You do that in three-dimensional reality when you're matter trying to change matter. When you're creating from the field and connection instead of from matter, the events tend to come to you instead of you going to get them. Now that's the fun part, right? That's yeah. why we do it.